In the previous video, we learned about the Bayesian decision principle, which is to try to minimize the posterior expected loss, or cost. In this video, we will introduce two commonly used loss functions for estimation problems. We will then use these to derive the minimum mean square error estimator, the MMSE estimator, as well as the maximum a posteriori estimator, also known as the MAP estimator. In the Bayesian decision theory, there are three important components. The likelihood, the prior, and the cost function or a loss function. Using the first two, the likelihood and the prior, we can compute the posterior distribution like this. And given the posterior distribution, we can make decisions by minimizing the posterior expected loss like this. So this summarizes the basic strategy in Bayesian decision theory. The most commonly used loss function in estimation theory is the quadratic loss, which will lead to the popular estimator, the minimum mean squared error estimator, or MMSE estimator. So, suppose that we have an estimation problem where we want to estimate a vector theta, which is an Rn. So, as we said, a very common loss function in this setting is the quadratic loss. And the quadratic loss we can express like this. So we have a loss function c of theta and a, which is equal to this L2 norm of theta minus a squared. Now this can be viewed as the squared error between the actual theta and our decision a. Now as theta is a column vector, we can write this norm here as theta minus a transpose. Now this is a row vector due to the transpose times theta minus a, again, and now this is a column vector, right? So this product here becomes a scalar, which is supposed to be, right? Because this is a cost function. Now, just for illustration purposes, let's assume that theta and a are scalars. If we try to draw this cost function here as a function of a for a fixed value of theta, it would look something like this. So let's assume that we have a theta here. So we will have zero loss at theta, and then the loss will grow quadratically as a moves away from theta. Now the interpretation of this is that it's okay to make a small error as long as it's not too big, right? So if a goes away too much from theta, our loss will increase rapidly. So before we derive the optimal estimator using this loss function here, uh, we should introduce some notation. First, we'll let theta bar be the expected value of theta given y. And second, we'll let p be the covariance matrix of theta given y. So this is a posterior covariance of theta after observing y. And it's by definition uh, expressed like this. Now, in order to derive the optimal estimator of theta, it's useful to try to simplify the function that we're trying to minimize. So recall that we're interested in minimizing the posterior expected loss, which is the expected value of our cost function conditioned on y. Now, in this case, our loss function is this, right? So if we insert this into our expression, we get theta minus a transpose theta minus a. Now, a useful strategy to find the optimal a is to simply take the gradient of this expression here with respect to a, and then set it to zero and solve for a. Although this is a perfectly fine strategy and something that you might want to try yourself, I personally prefer a different type of trick in order to come up with the optimal solution. We might call this trick to add an intelligent zero. Now this is just a trick that simplifies the calculations. In this case here, we will add and subtract theta bar in both of these terms here. So we get something like this. And I argue that this will simplify our derivation. So I'm simply taking this here, and then I'm adding and subtracting theta bar in each term here. So what happens now is that this part here is a zero mean random variable. 
and this part here is just deterministic value. There's nothing random about this part. As theta bar is just a vector and a is another vector. So this is deterministic. That is, we have a zero mean vector plus some deterministic vector and then the transpose and then the product with the same thing. What happens now is that we multiply these things together. Uh, we will get one term, which is the zero mean random vector squared. Now, note that this term here does not depend on A. So from a minimization point of view, this term does not really matter. Anyway, we can see that it's almost the same thing as the posterior covariance here, right? But the transpose is in a different place. So while this is a matrix, this will become a scalar. If we take the trace of it, it is possible to prove that we can still write this in terms of P, if we take the trace of it. So this term here can be simplified to the trace of p. Now this is not important, but I mentioned it here for completeness. The next term would be, for instance, theta minus theta bar times theta bar minus a, which becomes this term here. Now this is where it becomes interesting because this is where the trick that we have done pays off. Since the second part here is deterministic, we can leave it outside the expected value here. And since the expected value of theta is theta bar, this is simply zero. The expected value of this is zero. So we get zero times this, which is also zero. So this term will disappear. Now we get a similar term when we multiply this with this, which is also zero. So we get another zero here. So the first three terms here does not actually depend on A. However, the fourth term does, which is this times this. But it's actually deterministic, which means that taking the expected value is trivial as nothing happens. So we get just these two multiply with each other. So theta hat minus A transpose theta at minus a. Now, the posterior expected loss is the trace of p plus this term here. Now, this term does not depend on a, but this term does, right? As we would like to minimize with respect to a, it's fairly easy to see that we can do this by setting a equal to theta bar, which would make this zero, so zero times zero, which is zero. And that's the best loss that we can have in this case. It's also easy to show that this is a unique minimum. So to conclude, our optimal estimator, theta hat, which we get by finding the argument A that minimize the expected posterior loss. So minimum A of the posterior expected loss. and find that this is the posterior mean of theta, which is theta bar. Now this estimator is called the minimum mean squared error estimator. Now minimum, as we're minimizing something, mean because we take the posterior mean, and squared error because we have the quadratic loss of the error between theta and our estimate. Usually we denote this estimator as theta hat MMSE. So choosing the posterior mean as our estimate would make sure that we on average has as low squared error as possible. So that's what the minimum mean squared error estimator does. Another important type of loss function that's used in the estimation problems is the so-called zero one loss, which we are considering here. Again, the setting is uh, an estimation problem where the column vector theta is in Rn. Our zero one loss function can then be described like this. So C of theta and A is minus the 
Dirac delta function of theta minus a. Now the name comes from the discrete case where the, we get a loss of minus 1 when a is equal to theta and 0 for all other values. An interpretation of this is that we only care about picking the exact correct value of theta and all other values are equally bad. So again, if we try to illustrate this for the continuous scalar case where the zero one loss function is not really a proper zero one function, but the interpretation is the same. So if we have a fixed theta here, for example, our loss as a function of a is zero for all values not equal to theta. So we have zero for all values not equal to theta. And on the other hand, we get a minus infinity loss when a is equal to theta. So we have a direct delta spike here. So this means that it's infinitely good to set a equal to the true value of theta. And note that if theta is different from a, the loss is zero. And independently on how big the difference is, it's still zero. So we're basically saying here that we only really care about guessing the correct value. If it's incorrect, it's equally bad if it's just a bit off or if it's really far off. To get the optimal estimator, we can start by looking at the posterior expected loss. So the posterior expected loss is uh, defined like this. So if we replace this with our loss function, we get this expression here where we get the expected value of minus delta of theta minus a, conditional that we know why. Now, if we use a definition of the expected value on this, it equates to this integral here. We'll have minus the integral of our posterior distribution, p of theta given y, times our delta function of theta minus a, and then we integrate over theta. Now, you might recall that as the delta function is only non-zero, if theta is equal to a, there is a rule that says that if you integrate over a delta function like this, uh, the result is the function here evaluated at the value where the delta function is non-zero. So what we simply get from this integral here is minus the posterior distribution of theta given y evaluated at theta equal to a. So the optimal estimator theta hat is then the argument a which minimizes the posterior distribution if theta is equal to a. Now there's a minus sign here so we can replace minimization with maximization and removing the minus sign so we get this. Since it's the same thing to minimize minus something as to maximize something, since we're merely evaluating this where theta is equal to a, we can replace theta with a here and we get this final result here. That the optimal estimator with respect to the zero one loss is what we get when we find a theta that maximizes the posterior distribution. Now this estimator here is called the maximum a posteriori estimator and often denoted theta hat map, like this. We have now derived the two most famous Bayesian estimators, namely the MMSE estimator and the MAP estimator. Now here's a self-assessment question on this topic. 